Firstly, let's confirm we're all on the same page. Cloud Ready by Neverware is the best supported version of Chromium OS that you can run on almost any computer. It's very similar to Chrome OS. The only difference you're likely to notice is the lack of the Google Play Store. You can run Android as a virtual machine in Cloud Ready, but if you're really attached to Android apps, that's a poor substitute, and maybe you should try Fide OS, which can actually access the Google Play Store. Now, the simplest way to run Cloud Ready is to run it straight off a USB stick. Pros, this is easy and only requires a USB stick. Cons, this is a relatively low performance method. It'll be a bit slow and things could just reset. Um, it's not a very um, permanent kind of option. The next level up is to simply install Cloud Ready from that USB stick to your computer. This is an easy, streamlined process, but will wipe your PC and eliminate whatever your computer was already running. You'll only have Cloud Ready. So say you want to install Cloud Ready on your computer, but you also want to keep the operating system that's already there, be it Windows, Mac, or Linux. Well, previously you could dual boot Cloud Ready on the same hard drive as one of these operating systems, but that's no longer possible. Cloud Ready really needs a hard drive of its own. It's picky that way. So what you're going to need is a second hard drive or SSD. Now you may ask, can this second hard drive or SSD be an external portable drive? Yes, yes it absolutely can. Though today I'll be using an internal SSD. I've followed this exact same method on an external hard drive plugged in via USB and it worked just the same. Just make sure you've got a USB 3.0 hard drive, I would say. Using USB 2.0 is likely to cause some headaches. So, what I'm going to be doing with this PC is keeping its current Windows installation intact while adding a new drive running Cloud Ready OS. Okay, so you've got your computer, you've got Cloud Ready downloaded to a bootable USB stick, and you've got a drive that you're going to be installing Cloud Ready onto. Let's dual boot. Now Cloud Ready is very much going to want to install itself onto your Windows drive. So the best and most reliable way to prevent that is to physically unplug that Windows drive during this installation. So if you can, that's highly recommended. Unplug that Windows drive for now. However, if for whatever reason you can't do that, it's okay, don't worry, we can keep going. I'm going to leave mine plugged in to show you that this is still possible without unplugging. Next, we need to connect our new drive. This is the one we're going to be installing Cloud Ready on. And let's plug in our Cloud Ready USB and boot it up. In case you don't know already, the way to do that is by holding down the boot key on your keyboard while your system is starting up. Now the boot key is different across computers. So for me, it's F11, but for you, you might have to look it up if you don't know what it is. So now, if you have physically unplugged your Windows drive and it's totally protected by the fact it's not even connected, you can now go ahead and follow the regular Cloud Ready installation process. Cloud Ready's only option will be your new drive, so it'll automatically install there. However, if like me, you haven't unplugged, you'll need to take a couple of extra steps here. Connect to a network and log in as a user. Then hit the keys on your keyboard, Control alt t This brings up a command window. Type in shell and press enter, and that'll take us from crush to bash. What does that mean? It means we're ready to bash this thing. Next, put in sudo fdisk-l. Yes, that's an L, not a one. Don't be a dunce like I was. This is going to show us every available drive that Cloud Ready can see. They'll usually be referred to as SDA, SDB, SDC, and so on. You're going to have to carefully read the sizes of these drives to work out which is which. Now I can see that SDB is about eight gigabytes. That's my Cloud Ready USB stick. There's a 500 gigabyte one. That's my Windows drive. And SDA is about 240 gigabytes. That's the new drive I want to install on. So I enter CD space slash usr slash sbin then sudo space chrome os dash install space dash dash dst space slash 
dev slash SDA. Now it's SDA for me because that is the hard drive I'm installing to. Make sure you enter the right letter there for the hard drive that you're installing to. It could be SDB, SDC, or something that's slightly different. Make sure you get it right here and we'll try not to wipe something we didn't mean to. Next, it'll check if we're sure, hit Y for yes, then it'll think on that for a while. You'll see a bunch of code fly by. This could take up to 20 minutes. Finally, you should see the message, please shut down, remove the USB device, cross your fingers and reboot. That sounds like good advice. So let's enter sudo power off to shut down. Once shut down, you can remove your temporary USB stick. If you previously unplugged your Windows drive, plug it back in now and we'll all boot back up and it should hopefully take us to Windows. Now open up File Explorer and if your installation has gone anything like mine, you'll see a couple of new drives there that you're not able to access. These are the cloud ready drives. Windows is just freaked out by them. They're a bit of nothing. So really, what we want to do is hide those, yeah? There's just no point to be seeing them sitting there in Windows forever. So to hide those, hit the start menu and start typing in disk management. And we want to click on create and format hard disk partitions. Then you're going to see that one of your disks has a whole bunch of partitions. This is the cloud ready disk. For me, it's disk zero. It's got a whole list of partitions there, including drives D and E, which are the ones showing in File Explorer that I wanna hide. What I'm gonna do is one by one, right click on those and select change drive letter and paths. Then I'm simply going to click on remove and yes, I'm sure, and voila. That drive has now been hidden from within Windows. Now, when we restart the computer and hold down our boot key, we should have the option of Windows or Cloud Ready. And there you have it. Hypothetically, we could repeat this process to add a third operating system on a third hard drive, but let's save that for another day. Hope this video has been of some assistance. If you've got an issue that I might be able to lend a hand with, then don't hesitate to write a comment. Have a good one.